Meet the Undead Viking. I want to show you this game. It's called Dogs of the Galaxies. Dogs of the Galaxies is a game where each player is playing an intergalactic dog breeder. And taking in turn, each person is going to draw a dog breed card and they're going to describe that card to the other players. The other players are then going to come up with a name for that particular dog breed in the attempt, in the hopes uh, that the, the player that drew the card is going to pick their particular name of that dog to, to, uh, to best represents the picture uh, that they're having. Now, it's kind of one of those things where it's like the dog breeder has to have like a, a pretty good idea of a description uh, to tell what the, those people have, but then those people have to interpret that and then, you know, obviously come up with a cool and catchy name. Um, this is, a, yes, you should probably guess this is kind of like a social interaction slash party game, um, but it is definitely geared towards a, a, a lighter side of thing and, and definitely geared towards um, a, a, like a family type atmosphere, which is what I mostly played this game, but I did play it with my game group as well. Um, this The intergalactic theme fits because as you're going to see, like the, the, the dogs definitely are very weird and strange. You're not going to have a lot of like normal looking puppies. Um, they are going to be like either smart puppies that have jobs or they're going to be uh, dogs uh, that have like uh, tentacles or, or like they're robots or whatever, like things like that. So they're definitely not going to be your standard type of dog. There's also three different types of cards. There's going to be common, epic, and legendary cards. Uh, you know, the, the common cards are worth one point and then two and then three, respectively. And uh, they become more difficult for the players to uh, give a name to it. You know, common dogs are able to like basically pick anything, but with the epic and legendary cards, there are some specific rules uh, that the players have to abide by to give them the name. But regardless to any of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the game is played. I'm going to show you some of the cards, and then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts on Dogs of the Galaxy! Okay, so this is the entirety of Dogs of the Galaxies. It's just a big giant stack of these cards. And the cards are going to come with uh, common, epic, or legendary varieties. Now, of course, I carefully shoveled these cards so it's completely random, but I'm pretty sure the first three cards of the deck are going to be common and then epic and then legendary, just so I can show you how this works. So, uh, one person will be the dog reader on that particular turn. Now, the dog reader is going to pick a card off the top of the deck, and they're not going to show that card to anybody else at the table. What they're going to do is they're going to look at that card and they're going to describe it to uh, the other players. Now, they can use a little bit of uh, artistic license uh, when they describe it, but for the most part, they should accurately describe uh, the dog that they see. Um, then, depending upon the type of card, they're going to have to, the other players are going to have to come up with a name of that dog. Okay, so the first card, uh, I hope it's going to be a common card. Hold on. Yay, it is a common card. Okay, so now you're looking at this card. Obviously, this is not, I wouldn't say this if I was the person that was the dog breeder. Remember, you're trying to give them a description and you're trying to get the other people to try to come up with a cool name for this dog. So you could say, all right, so uh, this dog, uh, he, they can fly. Uh, they like wearing uh, their underwear um, and they have a self-satisfied grin on their face, if you can see there. And, you know, maybe, uh, maybe they're, they're, they believe in, uh, protecting the innocent or something like that. So now with that description, uh, the other players can take that and they can use it to come up with an idea of what they wanted to say. So, and because this is a common card, it's going to be worth one point. You can tell it's common because of the blue, a little paw print that's down there. Because now they could come up with, like, uh, Super Mutt or, or, uh, you know, like, I, I'm just coming up with names off the top of my head right now. Um, like I said, Super Mutt, uh, they could, uh, go with, uh, Wonder Boy, you know, because, hey boy, come here boy, you know, that kind of thing. Um, how about Powerful Puppy? You know, things like that. So each person going and turn around the table will give uh, a name for this dog. And then me as the dog reader would pick the person I think has uh, the best name and I'm going to give them a point because it's a common card. Remember, 10 points wins the game. All right, so um, now just moving on, we're going to go with the next card. Gee, I sure hope it's the next level. It's going to be worth two points. Oh, yay, it's an epic one. So you can see there's two paw prints on the bottom there to tell you it's worth two points. And now we have this guy and, you know, he's got um, like a, a banjo, it looks like, but, you know, He's wearing, uh, uh, like, a, a, a troubadour, a Mexican troubadour-style hat. Uh, so now we could describe it. Now, the big thing with this 
is that as we describe uh, this dog, who obviously looks like some sort of cactus dog, the name that the people have to come up with have to use this keyword, this cacti word, right? So you could say, oh, he looks like a mariachi. Um, he's he's got a he's got a banjo. He's got spikes all over his body. He's kind of greenish tinged. Um, he looks happy. He looks like he wants to play some music. Maybe he uh, looks a little bit uh, like a, a desperado from that old movie El Mariachi. I just used that. Uh, but, you know, something like that. And then you could say, uh, but you have to use the word cacti in the name. Now going once and, and I should mention that after, like, the first person goes, uh, the next person clockwise on the table then gets to draw the card, and they go next. So this isn't a situation where the person who wins draws the card. So just keep that in mind. But so the next person, which would be, you know, the person to my left, would, would describe this in some way, and now each person would have to come up with a name. So I would go with uh, Saguaro Cacti Hound. Saguaro Cactahound. That's a horrible name, but I'd probably lose. But regardless, I, I went with Saguaro, which means, you know, cac the type of cactus, and I use Cacti, so uh, Saguaro Cactihound. But maybe somebody else would come up with, like, um, Cacta Mariachi Puppy or something like that, and maybe they'd win. But then they get those two points. I'm, I'm not having a good day as far as being clever right now. All right, so now we're going to hope uh, the last card is legendary, and of course, since I purposely did it, uh, it is legendary. And you can see now we have a keyword of fiend right there. Let me make sure it's, it comes in. And then we can see there are three little puppy paw prints there. Um, that, and once again, we have to describe this. So then the next person around the table would say, okay, and you do have to say if it's uh, common, epic, or legendary. You have to tell them so they can follow the rules in which how they're going to give the dog a name. So now we could say, oh, you know, he looks kind of like Aliester Crowley. He's got a summoning circle. He's all red and sinister looking and you have to and it's fiend is the keyword so not only do we have to come up with a, a a name for the dog we have to use this particular word so fiend we have to use that um in in the uh in the name but we also have to come up with a uh, uh like a, a in the name we have to come up with like basically make it sound like uh, a sound that this dog would make uh, you know, so, and I'm, ha I'm drawing a blank. I'm kind of like, uh, I'm doing a little bit of a bluster here as I'm trying to rack my brain, uh, for a good name for this dog. Um, so, uh, you know, like the fiendish, you know, Dr. Mephisto or so, or, or Dr. Uh, the, you know, oh, wait a minute, Aliaster Crowley. Like we can go, uh, the fiendish, um, uh, God, what's what's a Crowley? Crowley, no, like a dog name, Aliester. I'm I'm drawing a blank here. Um, uh, the fiendish Australian cattle hound? No, I don't know. I I can't think of anything for this one. So we're gonna go with the the fiendish feline destroyer hound. I'm horrible. I'm horrible at this. I think I should grab another legendary card. But the big thing is, is that you have to go. Fiendish! You have to come up with like something. Maybe he howls like um, uh, the uh, the faithful fiend. Ooh, dogs are faithful. Okay, so uh, the faithful uh, fiendish, the the faith, faithful fiend. So we call him the faithful fiend. Dogs are faithful, and then we can go uh, and then make dogs howl. So I'm gonna I'm gonna so close. Turn the volume off while I do this. How how so. A faithful fiend! Ow! Like that. Okay, so that would be the name for this one. Uh, and so maybe um, like the person who picks has to then uh, pick the winner of who did the best dog sound, but also came up with the best name. And that was horrible. I probably would lose that. But then you would get three points for that. Now you get a giant stack of these cards. As you can see, there are tons of these you know here's a little ghost hound uh let's find another legendary one so here we have like the void hound uh you know so it's like uh i mean basically kind of like i don't know he's supposed to be like some sort of cthulhu like creature uh let me find another epic here's the robo so you'd have to use a robo mutt or something along those lines to uh describe the robo dog here's a star dog. <laughs> uh, anyway so like and these are like as i said there are tons of these different ones and uh like and i actually like the common cards probably the most just because of their expressiveness in a lot of them because like this guy is a playtime yet who wants to play like this is you describe this guy as being all like he's he's goofy he's standing on his front paws you know he's got this happy-go-lucky attitude you know so then you know somebody would come up with a funny name for that dog but like i said there are tons of these and remember you don't actually show the dog to the players so they have to go by the person's description yeah why do i always be stuck with this doofus you know like look 
He's got remember that old old cartoon cat dog? Well, here's one. Here's a dog dog or something like that. But anyway, um, I'd call him two for the price of one. Huh? Uh, I like this guy too. And a lot of them are. Um, you know, people that are, are working. You know, here's a poodle that's a construction worker or an architect or something like that from the, from the look of it. Or maybe he's like Thor because he's got a hammer. Who knows? But um, regardless, you go around the table, the first person to 10 points wins, and the person who has the least number of points has to jump up and act like a dog. They have to wag their tail and bark. That, that is actually in the rules, and you have to follow by the rules if you play it. Now, this is, yes, a social sort of party-esque game, and you know these are games that I enjoy playing with uh, my family. Uh, this was a complete and total hit uh, with my kids. Um, when I presented this to my gaming group and I told them, hey, just relax and have some fun, they were able to just relax and have some fun and enjoy it as well. And I think it's something that um, if you are a fan of dogs, and I am a fan of dogs, I, I, I own several, um, I love them to death. Uh, I think this is one of those games that, uh, especially if you have a, uh, like a family gatherings or things like that where people can let their guard down and just enjoy uh, some of the silliness that these games uh, like a gift to you, I think you're going to enjoy this game a lot. But I'll cover that and a whole lot more uh, as far as like, you know, just my thoughts on party games in general uh, in my final thoughts. All right, so there we go. That was the Dogs of the Galaxies. All right, so uh, there's one thing I, I didn't mention. I, I, I should have, I apologize for that. There are cards that look like this that are just like come up with your own. And you can see in the colors on the bottom, you can pick common, epic, or legendary for these as well. So when you draw one of these cards, you can just say whatever you want and uh, the players can come up with whatever. So is the game fun? Yeah, it is totally fun. Uh, my daughter and my son and my wife and I giggled uh, mightily uh, while we played this. And it was a lot of fun uh, watching um, my kids come up with uh, clever names for things. And it was a lot of fun for... Uh, you know, for uh, us to describe those cards uh, to each other. My wife is very competitive, and so it was very fun to watch my wife really, really try to win <laughs> as, hard, as hard as she can. Now, uh, you know, I mean, it, this is just gonna, yes, these are derivative of other uh, types of party games that you've probably played before. However, this has a fun little unique theme, and it has some really, really awesome art. And I really do like the fact that you have to describe that particular dog, and you have to use your best words. And it was, it was like, I think it is actually very helpful. Um, you know, my children. I mean, my my daughter's eleven, my son is seven, um, and I think it was very, very helpful for them to like explore their vocabulary and to explore uh, how to describe the, what they saw in front of them. We didn't, we didn't let them like, oh, can you help me with this and show me the card? I was like, no, no, you just you give me the best possible description that you have, and and you know, we just let them go, and um, I. I thought it was really like as far as helpful for like the interaction aspect and also just like put uh things into words you know as far as that goes so i i do think that there's some educational benefit here as well that i that i really enjoyed um that you know not every game has to be just rolling dice and moving something it actually can challenge uh my children uh to be creative and be imaginative which i think is a very important trait to have and to foster uh, uh in, in in my kids but no that. I just want to talk about party games in general. So this is a game where I don't think winning or losing really matters. Now, uh, I will gladly lose the game and stand up and bark and wag my tail uh, because my kids and my wife will laugh. Uh, but, you know, I, I, it's, it's one of those things where I don't think the score of this game really matters. What matters is the interaction between the people and also the fact that you're having fun. Um, most party games, in my opinion, a lot of them don't really ever have, they have a goal of winning, but the winning is totally a, a subset to the actual reason why you're playing. Um, uh, they aren't really highly competitive and they are about the experience and not the end result. Uh, I think, you know, because obviously you could game the game here in, in Dogs of the Galaxies. You could say, okay, how many points do you have? You've got seven. Okay, there's no way I'm going to pick you for this because I don't want to give you any points. Eh, that's garbage. Uh, you know, if you're going to play the game that way, you shouldn't even be playing a game like this. You should be playing a, a game that is highly competitive where you actually don't have a subjective determination of points. And so what you do need to do is go into this with an open mind and go into it with the idea that you're going to have fun and you might end up sounding a little foolish when you have to make the dog noises and things like that and even more foolish uh, when you have to stand up and wag your butt around because you lost the game which you know truth be told I actually kind of like doing that but anyway 
that being said, I had a blast playing Dogs of the Galaxies. If, if this is, if you, like I said, if you're a fan of dogs, if you like having a good, fun family game uh, that you and uh, your kids and your wife or whoever uh, in your family, I, I, you know, we got Grandma to play, and Grandma had a blast, too. So uh, she never had to wag her butt, though, which, which was, you know, whatever. Uh, so... If, if, if this is the type of game, you know exactly what you're getting when you have this game, and if that's the type of game you like, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this. So there you go. If you have any questions about it, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you want to go ahead hit the like button and the share and the subscribe and all that other stuff, go ahead, uh, knock yourself out. Um, Plus, uh, if you are uh, like out there and, and you're trying to be the best person you possibly can be, I believe in you. You can be the best person you possibly can be. I strive to do that every single day of my life. And I try to give out as much love to the universe or, uh, you know, the galaxies uh, as much as I can. Uh, because I guarantee you that uh, the universe will pay that back in kind. So until next time, I am the Edmund Viking. You are whoever you are. And you, whoever you are, are awesome. I'll talk to you soon.